Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Will you please welcome back Fortune Magazine Senior Editor, Internet and Technology, David Kirkpatrick. Okay, well, let's get more people in here, first of all. Is anybody out there? Please come in. Um, and uh, I don't know about you, but the lunch lab I went to was very dense, very multi-layered. Uh, peace and diplomacy and technology is a very multifaceted topic, but we had some amazing ideas come up, and, and, and uh, there's some fascinating things going on. Um, Let's keep the doors open until we get more people in here. Let's keep that door open a little longer. Um, but that's not to say that we shouldn't all sit down, but we need the door. Maybe we leave the door open on the right and close the one on the left. How about, and then open the other one. No. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so, yes, a few more. Come, 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 come. Uh, did we get any results? Oh, I guess we didn't of the uh, surveys yet. So anyway. I'm pretty much, uh, I guess I'll get started. John Donahoe is CEO of eBay. Um, he, got, he took that job in March of 2008, and uh, he's been making a lot of progress revitalizing the company. Um, he's here in conversation with Adam Lashinsky, my colleague. Please welcome John Donahoe and Adam Lashinsky. Thank you, David. Uh, I'd like everyone who's here to take out their spot me devices, if you would, and we're going to do a quick poll similar to the one that, that David did that will help John understand his audience, I think is the idea. So the first question is, do you use eBay.com? Yes or no, one or two. It takes about 10 seconds to get each one. OK. And uh, you know, my interpretation of that is, do you use it on a somewhat regular basis? Do I get to vote? No, we, we're going to assume the answer, you, your answer is yes. Yes. While we're waiting for the results, what do you buy on or sell on eBay.com? Everything. Every, everything. Uh, 57%. Holy, can the 43% please stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Next question, please. Do you use PayPal? Same thing, you know, on a, you know, you decide what regular basis means. But so what did you, what's the last thing you bought on eBay? Isn't that like saying, you know, I bought um, the latest Dave Matthews CD. On, on eBay. eBay? Yeah. On so eBay. new, obviously. New, yeah. OK. Yeah. A good part okay. of eBay. OK, 65%, a bigger percentage of the respondents That's use good. PayPal than eBay. Next question, please. I think I have four. Do you use Skype, uh, which eBay owns but is in the process of uh, planning to do an IPO spinoff of? Yes. Uh, wow, 59%, a bigger, bigger percentage still. Last question, if you use Skype, do you make pay calls? In other words, Skype do, you, out. do you use Skype out? Do you pay to use Skype? I use Skype, but only the free stuff. Yeah. And uh, you know, cheesy story you've heard a million times. My, we talk to my father every morning on Skype and absolutely loves it. Uh, most no. So this is a, we're in the United States, which explains part of that. How about right? Skype video? How many people here have used Skype video? Which is what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. a pretty pretty good right. percentage that of people in the room. All right, John. Thanks so much for being yeah, here. It's great to be here. Um, you've been CEO for about 18 months. Is that right? Uh, 15, 15, 16 months. And but who's counting? Right. <laughs> you've been doing a lot of stuff. You've been yep. making a lot of changes. Give us a sense of where eBay is today versus where it was, let's say, two years ago. Yeah, Adam, the, the, the company has changed a lot, and, and we still get referred to as an online auctioneer, but in many ways, um, uh, we have moved well beyond that. If you look at um, eBay today, less than half of our revenues are the eBay.com, um, the eBay, core eBay business, and only half of that is auctions. So only a quarter of what eBay does is auctions today. It's still the largest e-commerce site in the world by two and a half times larger than anyone else. And that's roughly half what we do. Then we've built a, a billion dollar business of other e-commerce formats. So StubHub and tickets are classified sites around the world, shopping.com. And that's now a billion dollar business growing two or three times faster than e-commerce. Uh, PayPal is now 
35% of eBay. And PayPal, as you know, is the leading world online uh, payments provider. Um, PayPal is a business that will be bigger than eBay because the opportunity is to um, you know, form payments for all of, all of e-commerce, not just eBay. And it's a business that's growing tremendously. Over half of that business is off of eBay. And uh, that business, off eBay business, grew 32% in the second quarter. And then Skype is the last part of our portfolio. Incredible business, uh, growing very, very quickly, and, uh, but not one that has strong synergies with our other businesses. So we're focusing on e-commerce and payments as two strong core businesses. Revenue, Skype positions. was up 43% in the quarter that you yeah. reported yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, we should note that the eBay stock is up 11%, not in anticipation of John being here today, but because <laughs> of the market's reaction today. To, to your earnings that, that you announced yesterday yeah. and the projections that, that you announced for the rest of the year. Uh, when will PayPal be bigger than eBay? And when you say eBay, you, there you do mean eBay.com. Yeah, eBay.com. You know, um, PayPal has about 5 6% share of, of, of its addressable market. It's the largest online payments provider by, by wide margin. But uh, I see no reason why PayPal can't. We said PayPal will double in the next three years on our analyst day. It'd be four to $5 billion business. And if you extend that out, it's probably five or six years, uh, four or five or six years before it passes eBay. And I think it can go well, well beyond because it does, uh, it does enable payments on all e-commerce sites, both on the web, on the desktop as well as on mobile. So when that happens, are you going to have to change the name of the company? <laughs> That's the least thing I'm worried about at the moment. Would it be, pay, would it be PayPal.com and then eBay would be eBay, a PayPal company? Uh, we'll probably hire some big fancy design consultant and give us some, some strange name. So eBay is, um, it's, a, it's a complex company now, especially in comparison to what it was when it started. They're the eBay.com, then you called it marketplaces, and now marketplaces became a lot of, a lot of different things. So you know, I wanted to see who in the audience actually uses eBay and how much they use it to get a sense of people's perception. Now, I, I, I talked to some of my, to some people in the room who are you know, savvy people. I said, what do, you, what do you think of, what do you think of eBay, the company? What should I ask John? And I, I, got a, I got some responses that you won't like, but I want you to sort of talk through, that, talk through them with me. Sure. Uh, someone said, well, is it a growth company, or is, it, uh, is he managing it to, to gently let it down, or is it a, a player in a larger Amazon world? Um, there's this struggle in, peop in people's minds is, can eBay regain the kind of growth that it once had? Uh, the, the, the praise from Wall Street yesterday was almost of a damning of faint praise nature. How do you, how do you address those? In other words, they're not doing as poorly as they were doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's what you got to keep in mind. E-commerce today is 5% of offline retail. And the natural landing point of e-commerce, I believe, is somewhere between 15 and 20%. If you think about it, what portion of everything you buy will you eventually buy online? And so we're still in the early days of e-commerce. It's, it's a 10-year-old it's a industry, 12-year-old industry, -year industry uh, that could easily could double over the next five years. And so there's going to be room for multiple winners and, and, and a lot of growth. eBay is by far the largest, uh, largest e-commerce provider. $60 billion traded through eBay last year. That makes it almost three times as large as the next largest competitor. And it is global. 23% of it um, is cross-border in one form or another. And, and so eBay's starting point is an amazing franchise. It still has the, it still has the, it's the most trafficked website in the world with the most active users in the world. And we're going through what, um, really, we're one of the early e-commerce and internet sites to go through uh, what I would call a growth inflection point that all great companies have to go through. It grew on a tear for eight or nine years. And uh, now we've got to, in essence, reinvent the company. And in particular, we need to evolve from what was an auctions-oriented site to, a, to an e-commerce site focused on, focused on our sweet spot, which is a marketplace where 25 million sellers can, can sell in a marketplace confident we'll never compete with them, and, and where um, uh, we're focused on uh, the wider selection of inventory than anyone else can, can offer. eBay sweet spot. Today, over half of what's sold on eBay is brand new, branded, but it's not the latest generation. 
So, so a new iPhone came out last week. There are a lot of brand new iPhones of the last model on sale for eBay, on sale on eBay, that you can get for 40, 50% less than you can in other places. I, explain to me what you meant by confident that we'll never compete with them. Was there a, a competitive swipe in, in that in that? Well, we're, we're, we're a marketplace, and we're not a retailer. And, and there are a lot of very good online retailers who will be very successful. Um, they focus on new, in season, the latest items. We're a, a marketplace. Our focus has been and will continue to be on what we call the secondary market. So, for example, it wouldn't have made sense for eBay to bid for or buy Zappos.com? No, that's a retailer. You know, the other thing I'll say, Adam, is um, if you look across eBay, every product and every format in our entire portfolio is growing uh, faster than e-commerce, double digits, except auctions. So the fixed price format on eBay, which is half of what we do, is growing at 19%. You know, classifieds is growing double digits. StubHub's growing double digits. PayPal, as I described, is growing double digits. So we're a large leader going through a period of transition, and we're making the tough changes we need to make to uh, have our user experience uh, improve and, and get our marketplace back to the growth rates we'd like to. I don't want to uh, look backward too much, but what was the company not doing right? Because I think you're ably framing the, the debate in terms of comparing eBay with the marketplace, but if you compare eBay with the other companies who were high growth leaders at the time that eBay was a high growth company, then the comparison isn't quite as favorable. So what wasn't eBay doing right at the time? That What have you had to change about the company? Well, eBay faced a classic innovator's dilemma. Um, it was experiencing explosive growth. And, and this can happen on the internet. You see it time and time again where, where a business model hits and experiences global growth, and eBay did a fabulous job of scaling that growth around the world. But uh, during that period, you can get so focused on scaling the current business model that innovation slows down. And, and in, in simplest terms, our user experience just didn't keep up. The user experience that was the source of that explosive growth, uh, innovation was happening all around it. And so um, what we've had to do is go back over the last really 18 months and make some real fundamental changes to our user experience to ensure that it's competitive in today's, in today's market and in tomorrow's. But, um I, I've written about this, so you're a, your career was in management consulting, and so you have a, a broad view of the business world, and eBay developed a, a, a management consultant culture. So were there too many manage, are there too many management consultants and too few great product people? I mean, I'm, what I'm trying to learn is how do you, you're essentially saying, and not these words, you didn't have the right product people. Do you have the right product people now, and how, did you, how, do, you do, how well, do you make that transition? Well, one of the things... I'm doing is elevating the role of technology in our company. Uh -huh. And so um, we are bringing more senior software architects and technologists into the company and putting them more at the table for product design. And uh, one of the ways that's playing its way out is we're building out our platform far more aggressively than we have in the past. So today we're announcing, for instance, PayPal's opening up its platform to third-party developers. Hey, take a second and explain what that means. Well, PayPal, um, as you know, is the leading online payments provider. And uh, today we'll be the first online payments company and the first payments platform that's opening up to third-party developers. And what this means is there's the potential for explosive innovation and growth on top of the PayPal platform. Yep. You know, so you showed me one over lunch. Tell yeah. everybody about it. Well, here, here's, here's, here's an example, simple one. Uh, how many people here um, use Twitter? Okay. There's an application called TwitMe, uh, or TwitPay, rather. TwitPay that got created, where you can now go in your Twitter account, your launch Twitter applications, and you can twit money to somebody else on Twitter. And so it's a currency where you can move money on Twitter, uh, the way you get the money out of Twitter is via PayPal. Um, but you don't have to bring it out. You can continue exchanging it back and forth. And this is a great example where PayPal's the underlying payments platform, but to use the product, you don't need to know someone's PayPal um, ID or you don't need to use your PayPal password. Mm -hmm. You can use it within the Twitter context. And TwitPay is a third-party developer. They don't third have a third-party developer with... that just developed this on the PayPal platform. So I think what you're going to see on PayPal is analogous to what you saw on the iPhone where there'll be hundreds and over time thousands of different applications that will be embed payments. Uh, you know, another example is uh, there's an application on the iPhone called 
uh, split the bill, or bill split, I forget the exact name, where four or five friends go to dinner, and you say you want to split the bill, right? And it calculates it. That's well, cool. you're going to be able to press that button in PayPal. You'll be able to receive money and send money um, uh, instantaneously. And PayPal's application today on the iPhone is, is a very, a very um, uh, simple and easy to use send money application for those that haven't used it. And $15 billion a year goes through person-to-person -person payments on PayPal. Mm -hmm. And so this, if I send you money using TwitPay, yep. um, who get, does anyone make money on that? Um, currently, the sender or the receiver has to pay a fee, but that will go away in six months when it gets out of beta. Mm -hmm. And so peer-to-peer uh, -peer payments on PayPal are free. Um, when, you, when you have it funded out of your bank account or out of your debit card. Mm -hmm. um, what's Bill Me Later and why is it uh, not profitable? Uh, Bill Me Later is a, is a really exciting transactional credit company. Um, and it's a classic intersection of a financial services company and the internet. Because most credit providers say, all right, Adam, you've got a $2,000 line of credit and, and you can uh, call off that. What Bill Me Later does is transaction by tra transaction makes a decision about whether they'll extend you credit. And all you have to do when you use Bill Me Later is put in your birth date and the last four digits of your social security number, and within less than a second, they'll make that underwriting decision. So this has been a business that has grown uh, tremendously. It's gotten nice traction uh, with merchants. And so we bought, uh, we bought Bill Me Later last fall, and it's. Um, it's adding to our PayPal franchise in a very positive way. It sounds risky in a time of, uh, you know, where risky credit is a scary topic. Well, they've done a great job on credit risk. Uh, because they're only underwriting transaction by transaction, um, it allows for a far better underwriting decision. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result, uh, uh, Bill Me Later's uh, credit loss performance, net profit margin, which is the way you calculate that, is significantly better than the rest of the industry. And it's, so we feel, it's we've, diluting PayPal because you're investing in it, is that? Well, it's, yes, it's, it, their margins are lower than PayPal's currently and I see. as they're growing. So it, it's pulling down PayPal's margin in the short term. And um, stick with acquisitions for just a moment. I mean, eBay made one epic ac acquisition, acquisition of PayPal, and, and you know, a few stinkers along the way, depending on how you define stinker. You, the, your bi a big one you made was G-Market in South Korea, is that right? Yes. Do you need to make other acquisitions in other parts of the world to build out eBay's global franchise? Well, we're a strong company. One of the, one of the nice things you have, we, we were talking earlier, we, you know, we generate about two to two and a half billion dollars of cash flow a year. We generated a billion two in cash flow in the first 12, six months of this year, toughest economic environment, and we have a strong balance sheet. And so where we see opportunity to, to strengthen our core eBay business, the core e-commerce franchise, or uh, the payments uh, business, we will. And so we bought Bill Me Later for a billion dollars in the fall, and we spent a billion two buying G-Market, which really extends our leadership position in e-commerce in Korea. Because eBay Korea and G-Market were the number one and two competitors in the Korean market, uh, both marketplaces, and, and uh, that strengthens it. So we'll continue to to take advantage of our strength, and, and uh, especially during this period of time where, where others are feeling challenged. You know, it's worth lingering over these numbers for a moment, you know, given the, you know, the disparaging comments that I threw at you earlier. You, 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 did, you, you generated $600 million of cash, free cash flow, in the last quarter alone. You've got $3 yes. billion of cash yes. on your balance sheet. Yes. And you're, so you're, in other words, you're adding $2 billion a year. Yes. You got to figure out. You either have to make more big acquisitions, or figure out something to do with that cash, or let it build up at uh, three percent interest, or something. You know, we've been very disciplined about uh, about what we've done with our with our balance sheet. Um, we first focused on organic growth, um, and so we make the investments we need to make in in our company to to strengthen it. Uh, then we make acquisitions that strengthen our core business, and then. If there's any excess returns, we'll either buy back our stock or find other ways to return it to shareholders. Would you pay a dividend? You know, I think the internet's too young to have a dividend. The, the, one of the exciting things about the internet is innovation is accelerating. I mean, the, the pace of change. Think about this. Think about um, 10 years ago when you walked into a department store or walked into any retailer and you paid with your credit card. Walking in today, it's virtually the same experience. You walk into a store, and the, the commerce and, and paying are, are very little change in the last 10 years. Think about 10 years ago in e-commerce. Browsing on eBay was considered a cutting-edge experience. 
Today, it's fundamentally changed. Today, you go into your, with your laptop, you go into Starbucks, you, you search from site to site to site. You can pay with PayPal today. Ten years ago, you had to, you had to, uh, you had to sort of send cash in, a, in, a, in an envelope. So significant change. You know, four years ago, five years ago, Skype didn't exist. Three or four years ago, Facebook didn't. Twitter didn't a couple years ago. Um, the pace of change is accelerating, and how people buy and sell online and how you pay online is going to be significantly different five years from now than it is today. You know, and, and, and so the need for innovation, the need for change is huge, and the challenge and opportunity we've got in being such a uh, in such an exciting market and having the leadership positions we do is to, to make sure we're at the front edge of that. And things like the PayPal platform uh, will ensure we do that. So to paraphrase, if there's too many opportunities for investments to make to contemplate returning money in the form of a dividend to shareholders. Well, I think the dividend's the wrong form. We bought back $5 billion of our stock over the last three years, so we have returned a significant portion to our, uh, to our investors. But our investors uh, tell us consistently they want us to make intelligent investments that allow us to, to uh, extend our, our leadership position and, and grow in a profitable and sustainable way. So let's come back to the, um, before we go to questions, to the, to the eBay.com business itself or the marketplace of business itself. You're going to, you, you have sort of a, a, a biannual schedule of, of making changes and you're going to make some of them next week. Can you give us a window into some of that? You know, sure. The, um, we we um, are making a lot of changes on the eBay site and uh, we now announce those twice a year and, 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 and um, Next week, we'll announce some things like uh, today, if you're a top buyer on eBay, you have complete money-back guarantee and a dedicated phone line, so where you, uh, where you um, can have any problems taken care of. eBay will either refund the money or will work with the seller to get it taken care of, and we'll be rolling that out more broadly in the second half of the year. Uh, there's an eBay uh, loyalty program called eBay Bucks that we piloted quite successfully the first half of the year. We'll be rolling that, that out some more um, for some of our sellers. Uh, we're making it easier to list high volumes of items and making it easier to sell. So things that, that uh, I think will be well received by our community. I read one analyst speculate that you'll have more competitive seller commissions as well. Is that accurate? Well, we've, what we've done is we've oriented sellers right to earn discounts based on the quality of service they provide. And so sellers that are providing the highest quality service on eBay actually grew their businesses 14%. Um, in the in the second quarter, and they're getting uh, they're getting the best discounts. Um, excuse me for for averting my gaze over this way, John. But I noticed we have some questions on Spot Me, so I'll just read a couple. Yeah. Do you have any plans to leverage your SMB, that small and medium sized business relationships, to help with up funnel spend? I don't know what that is, but it says, for example, advertising. Well, I'm not sure exactly what this means, but let me, we're doing two things that might get at it. One, we're, we're one of the largest buyers of keywords in the world. We buy 15, 20 million keywords um, a week. And we have a technology that does that and calculates return on investment. And so we're extending that capability as some of our sellers want to use that capability as they buy keywords offline. We're also allowing our sellers to buy advertising on eBay. So a seller sort of list items on eBay, but also, also are able to buy ads to promote their items and, and, and get traffic to their eBay stores. So you, you shared with me over lunch the size of that business? It's a, uh, our, our advertising business is a couple hundred million dollar business. So I, I have this distinct memory of a 1999 or 2000 conference call, earnings call, where an analyst asked Meg Whitman, would you ever put advertising on on eBay.com, and she said, absolutely not. That, that wouldn't be the right thing for our community. What, what changed? Well, see, this is where e-commerce, you've got, our, our mission is to connect buyers and sellers. And how buyers and sellers connected eight years ago was only through eBay, a walled garden destination site. Today, buyers and sellers connect through an auction format, a fixed price format. They connect through StubHub. They connect through classifieds. They connect through an ad. And what buyers and sellers want is choice. A seller wants to be able to uh, choose whether they sell it on a listing on eBay, sell it on a listing on one of our classified sites, or sell it on, uh, uh, put an advertisement on. And so we're, to, e commerce is changing fast enough. We think it's a real strength to have multiple formats and have the flexibility to offer that choice to, to buyers and sellers. And that's what allowed us to you know, build a billion dollar business off of uh, 
billion dollar e-commerce business off of eBay really only over the last five years. And additional revenue streams are always a good thing. Yeah, what's well, different ways to monetize, connect buyers and sellers and monetize. Before we go to Q&A in the audience, so this question on the bottom, it seems like fun was a critical part of what made eBay successful. What are you doing to bring the fun back? Well, the, the, here's where I think we, we lost our way a little bit. We thought fun could overcome a, a less than optimal user experience. And so we are restoring trust back to eBay in a way where people can have a trusted experience and then you can layer fun on top. And where fun comes in eBay is from the sellers, from the community. You know, 25 million sellers. We have business sellers, but we have a lot of consumer sellers and small sellers that bring, bring items onto eBay that you otherwise could, couldn't find anywhere else, who bring that character and personality and, and, and um, oh, just fun to eBay that you couldn't find anywhere else. So I think that will show through more and more as we, as we get the user experience clean and, and it'll always be an important part of who we are. Questions? David. I'm not shy. Um, it's well known that Facebook is working on a payments system. Uh, how do you think that would affect PayPal? Well, I, here, here's what I think the evidence would say. Being an online payments provider, you need to be part payment system or financial services concern and part internet company. And PayPal is the only company that's actually successfully bridged both. So there are a lot of payments companies that are struggling to get online, and there have been some very high profile internet companies that have tried payments and, and struggled. And, and you do need both. So PayPal has banking licenses in dozens of countries. PayPal connects directly into 15,000 banks around the world. PayPal has world-class financial services and payments risk detection programs that were built by losing tens and hundreds of millions of dollars in their early years. And PayPal's built as a technology platform. And so by opening up our platform, I think you'll find people will um, find a much better solution building on top of the PayPal infrastructure and platform. So is that a way of saying it could intersect somehow? I think you'll see, um, uh, and I, I don't know Facebook's plans, but I think you'll see others building on top of the PayPal platform and building applications like TwitPay. TwitPay is a great example. Because what Twitter wants is the ability to have its community send money back and forth over the, the Twitter communication. They don't have to worry about any element of the loss, the risk, and the, 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 all the elements that come with moving money. They can build on the PayPal platform. And I think you'll see more and more applications. I was saying to Adam, we had lunch, I was saying, it's, we're not many years off where the restaurant will we'll just send the bill to your, to your smart device They'll just send to build your smart device and you'll pop it back. And PayPal will be the platform that powers that. And the restaurant can build whatever application they want on top. And, and so I think the kind of innovation you're going to see in payments is going to be, I think mobile payments will be large. And I think a lot of that will be built on top of the PayPal platform because it doesn't pay to rebuild that. It, uh, payments is a winner-take-all business. And I think PayPal is very well positioned. And you, you, you might point out that your friend, your corporate friend Google has shown that it's a difficult thing to build one of these from scratch? Well, they, they you know, certainly um, uh, put an effort forward. No one's Google talking payments. about checkout anymore. Yeah, and so um, you know, we're focused on making sure what we're doing is, is the right thing. Over there, please. I'm, uh, I'm familiar that- uh, I'm sorry, Anthony, just tell sorry. us who you are. Anthony Masucci, reporter with dailyfinance.com. I, pretty friendly with some power sellers on eBay, and I know you guys put in place a lot of steps to deal with fraud, basically people stealing things from one another, uh, item being sent, somebody not paying for it, or initially paying for it on PayPal, and then somehow withdrawing the money. But the folks I know who do this uh, pretty regularly say there are still many steps, a lot of paperwork, a lot involved to get their money back, although they do eventually get it back. And for them, they're very frustrated by that, and it's one of the reasons they're not selling more on eBay. What, what do you have to say about that? Well, I, I'm a little confused by that statement. When you say getting their money back, you mean when they sell items, getting their money? For example, they sell an iPhone for, say, $500. Yeah. Somebody pays on PayPal. It's all legit. They send the iPhone. Two days later, the money's re... Uh, for some, you know, maybe it was stolen credit card was used or some other reason. The money is... The seller then has the money taken out of their PayPal account. So they have to file a grievance or some sort of protect their seller protection now. And it, and it works, and they get, eventually they get the $500 back, 
but it's sort of like file, filing your taxes on April 15th is quite involved paperwork, a lot of phone calls that need to be made, a lot of sort of, I haven't done it myself, but from what I understand, there's quite a bit of legwork from the point that they're trying to get their money back to the time where they actually get it back. And it does happen, but it, it keeps them from selling more because it is so involved. See, this is a PayPal issue, not an eBay issue. And, and, and here's those sellers' alternatives. They can get a credit card merchant account if they can qualify to get one. Many eBay sellers couldn't. Many small sellers can't. And a credit card merchant acquirer will hold their money for 15 days and then give them the money. PayPal gives the money instantaneously. It's the only payment system that gives it instantaneously, and it gives it instantaneously to a small individual seller who couldn't get a merchant account, as well as to a large merchant. And so then if there's a dispute, rather than holding the money for 15 days, PayPal's got to adjudicate that dispute. But, but those sellers can't, can't get their money from any other payments provider instantaneously, thus causing the problem you're describing. Because what's happened is Visa wouldn't have given them the money in the first place. So that's a PayPal issue, not a, one, not a and that's, one, to me, that's driven by the strength of the PayPal product, which is it allows a small merchant who couldn't have, couldn't be in business otherwise, to receive money, and they get their money instantaneously. I want to move on because we're out of time. One last question. Um, Fred Vogelstein at Wired. How are you? Um, Good. I was intrigued by your... Oh, there you are. I was intrigued by uh, the fact that eBay buys 15 to 20 million keywords a week. Does that, is the extrapolation work out for a year? Does that mean you're buying no, a... No, no. I mean, there are many, what, we have this thing called Triton where it calculates return on investment of each keyword buy, by search engine, by basically minute of the day, by day of the week, minute of the day. And so it's constantly, we, we make no, no human intersects with those decisions. We determine how much you want to spend and it calculates and, and actually buys the keywords and tracks actual performance to see which ones lead to sales and which ones don't. Right, but what I mean is, is that does that mean you're buying about a billion keywords no, a year? No, no, how a many lot would of you say you're buying about a year? Uh, oh, I don't know that. I don't, my guess is there's probably, I don't know, 80% overlap week to week. You know, so, so we buy the word keyword, you know, iPod every week. John, thank you very much. Good, thank you, Adam. Okay. Great to be here. Thank you.